One of the fundamental understandings as part of the Earth systems model that we use to characterise the atmosphere, biosphere, hydrosphere and geosphere, or the interaction of those systems, one of the fundamental concepts that lies behind that is that if you make a change in one of those spheres, that it's likely to impact at least another one of those spheres, and it can impact all of them, in fact. One example might be that um, if you had a water contamination issue, then that might have a direct flow-on effect. So if you've got water that's polluted or toxic, that might have a flow-on effect to the local biota, so that automatically affects the, so the hydrosphere is affecting the biosphere. And then uh, let's say, for example, that causes some of the vegetation to die back, and so that it's less able to photosynthesize, and hence it's not putting gases into the atmosphere as it was previously. So let's say a forest dies back in that way. Uh, then that directly impacts the atmosphere. And let's say this toxic water is also filtering down through the soil and contaminating groundwater or just making the soil too toxic for life to continue in that area, then clearly it's impacted the, the geosphere as well. And so that's one example of how different the different spheres or a change in one of the spheres can impinge on the others. Now, if we think about this from an energy system, let's say, for instance, think about the, the thermal transfer of energy from the sun to the Earth's oceans. The way that that works is that we have some bodies of water that are warmer with respect to others and this starts causing movement of water in the oceans. It's also uh, affected by the rotation of the earth. So that's a, that's a natural process and those ocean currents work in certain ways. But one of the aspects of this is that nutrient rich cold bottom waters sometimes make their way up to the, the ocean surface. And so that creates a food supply for small organisms which eventually are predated on by a bit larger organisms and so on and so forth. So there's already uh, an impact on the biosphere in that way. So that transfer of energy through the system influences where we have these upwellings and where those organisms can um, consume the nutrients and then you might have various trophic levels. So if we get back to biology, you, food chains where larger things predate smaller things and so on up through the food chain. And so there's that transfer of energy through the biosphere in that way. So one of the main sources of energy to the surface of the planet is the sun, but there is also another source of energy which is from within the earth. So it's associated with radioactive decay and we see that probably manifesting uh, in, in, a, in a mechanism that we understand or that we see fairly regularly is the extraction of minerals like uranium that are radio have radioactive decay and we can utilize that for example in nuclear power plants so uranium plutonium those sorts of things and what tends to happen is they utilize the heat energy or the thermal energy from the breakdown of those or the chemical reactions of those minerals and uh, use that to heat water and flash it to steam, drive a turbine and in that way generate electricity. So thereby converting the, radio the radioactive energy or the chemical energy to electrical energy. And then of course we can use that electricity in a multiple multitude of different appliances that might then say your electric stove that will convert that electrical energy into heat and light energy and so on.